my dog is digging to China and oh. making so much noise on the bed. Do you have any dogs? I have no dogs. No, I'm not. I'm not. I know this is like a controversial point, and why not start an interview out by saying sure, a hot take? It. I'm not a. I'm not much of an animal guy. Like I just. Uh, that, that's adorable. But this one's cute though, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll give you that. We'll give you that. <laughs> I have kids, you know, so my they, mom. They my mom isn't an animal home. person either. Oh yeah. No. So, she, she takes care of my dogs for me while I travel, but she would never have a, a pet on her own. Like She just doesn't like the idea of it. It feels like way more responsibility than like taking care of a human, you know, like it is in a way like you yeah. have to. I, I it's hard for me to like know what they want because I can't speak. And like mm-hmm. at, at least like a kid, you can kind of guess at least. Yeah. And yeah. They'll shake their head. But it's true. No, it's true. And they're harder to leave too because they they don't understand so sure. whenever i leave him god so my heart breaks it's like he doesn't get what's going on yeah you know he's just looking at me sad anyway <laughs> anyway nothing about that <laughs> um but you said you were just getting um back from travel where were um are you back from a tour or what what was going on no i've actually been in vegas the past couple months just kind of checking it out as a possible place to move to because um, a lot of people from the music industry have moved there. You know, I ran into the Five Finger Death Punch guys and some of the DJs from Octane and other various members of of other bands. Um, and it just, it's because it's affordable. So a lot of people are leaving California, which is where I'm at right now. It's just, it's just like, you have to be like the King of Sheba to afford to live here. So we're con- considering moving to Vegas right now. My uh, one of my best friends, he just moved to Vegas, not from oh, California. Cool. He moved from Fargo. Um, oh, I, I love that show. <laughs> Isn't it great? Love, that show. Um, love that show. But he he was like, um, when he was first told me that he was moving out there, I was like, dude, it's going to be super expensive. Like, you're never going to find a place. And he was like, he found a place in like two weeks. And he was like, yeah, this is actually really, really great out here. Yeah, we found a place. Um pretty quick it took a couple weeks and um so i'm excited i'm so excited i get to move next month so i'm very excited a fresh start i love that yeah i'm stoked um so so let's talk about um the the new song that you've got out uh, i still believe um how did how did that song come to be it's a very empowering song um what was the uh the creative process for it oh thank you for saying it's empowering that means a lot you know um it we we didn't we weren't one of those bands that did like a COVID album, you know, where a lot of bands did their like masterpiece album during COVID. We didn't do anything. We stopped halt on everything. Cause New Year's day, I started it when I was a kid and um, we started touring, you know, in a car in like 2004, you know? So it's like, we've just been going and going and going, especially like the three or four years before COVID we toured within this moment in hailstorm, I think for like three years straight. And we were supposed to do more when we got the call that like COVID was shutting everything down. We were supposed to go to Australia with hailstorm. And I remember when I got the call, I just felt so relieved. I felt like I needed this break. Like I needed to stop. And if I hadn't stopped and just given myself, I took like a year of no band. I wouldn't have had anything to write about. Like there's just like nothing left in me to, to write about at that point. And so we casually got back in the studio. They said, whenever you're ready, whenever you feel like it, just go into the studio, see what happens. So the first day in the studio, my producer, Scott Stevens, he's so good with women. He does, you know, Dorothy, Hailstorm in this moment, um, Lilith Czar, all kinds of amazing women. And, uh, And he goes, how are you feeling? And he's always so good at taking how I feel and, and helping me turn it into a song. And I said, I don't know if I still believe (laughs) in all of this. I was like, I just don't know anymore, you know? And he's, he kind of took it and spun it around. He's like, we talked about it. I was like, okay, I I do still believe in me. And I do still believe in this. And he is such a genius that he took that and helped me create a song around that feeling. So that was the first song we did in years after all that craziness. And um, it was a really empowering song for me, too, because while I was singing, I was like, yeah, I still believe you. We got this. Like, let's go. Let's make a record. I I felt really great after listening to it. And it's always it's always good when you get that feeling. But I want to 
you said something really interesting because I've talked to a lot of bands about, you know, when COVID happened and everyone, like most of the people that I've talked to were like panicked. Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to live? All this other yeah. stuff. And you are the first person that I've talked to that was like, all right. Like, I, was so I, I mean, happy. like, like besides all the bad stuff happening yeah. out in the outside, but like to be able to like force yourself into a break, what was that like? What was that like? Because I don't, I don't know if I've ever been able to just take a break and like I'm step like back. And I'm like you. I can't. I can't. I cannot take a break because I. Do you get FOMO? Oh yeah, hundred so, percent. Yeah, that's a big thing I wrestle with FOMO. I wrestle with like missing out on like opportunity or connection or. Um, I, it's like, even if I'm so tired and exhausted and don't want to do something, I'll force myself to do it. Cause I, cause I don't want to miss out or, um, I don't want anyone to feel like I didn't work my hardest or I didn't give it my all. So I really ran myself into the ground. I, didn't say, I say no to nothing before COVID. I, you want me in the studio? I'm there. You want me on this tour? I'm there. You, there's an event. I'm there. And I, I, I really was burning myself out and I wanted a break, but I was like, it's never going to happen because I'm not going to choose it. Right. No one's going to understand. It's like, if I ask for a break, you know, I'll get what they're going to think I'm not working or I don't, I don't care or whatever, whatever goes through your mind. And so, I mean, obviously I'm not happy for all the, the, the tragedy that came with COVID, obviously not that, but internally in my little world, I was so happy that it was a break that wasn't my fault <laughs> so I had because in my mind I was like I'll be honest I didn't we were supposed to go to Australia directly after another tour and I was just thinking like I would do anything not to get on that plane and that's a, I felt horrible for saying that because I'm so blessed to be invited on these tours with these legendary bands and how could I ever not take every opportunity that I can and so it felt so good. It felt so, so good to just be at home. And, um, I, I moved in with my mom during COVID because, um, my dad passed early, early COVID. Sorry. So that's, that's okay. You're sweet. And, um, so I kind of was like, you know what, now's the time to focus on family. I'm going to stay with my mom during COVID because who knows what's around the corner in life at this point. And we had so much fun. We did puzzles. We watched movies. I got to be, uh, spend time with my parents, my, my stepdad and my mom, who I hadn't in years. I missed birthdays, funerals, weddings, holidays because I tore. And um, I just really enjoyed it. <laughs> I just enjoyed it. It was great. I, that's a, oh, it, it, like thinking about that, that first summer um me and my wife wow, we, had, right? we had like we had just gotten married we had just moved to a new town and um we were like all right let's go and meet people and then it like shut everything uh, down um but like it it really helped us you know like me and her we got way closer I mean obviously oh, we were nice. married but like um but yeah I think I'm I'm thankful that someone is able to say a positive out of not making a masterpiece out of the, yes. out of that break it's okay to find the silver lining, you know, that's okay. No one is not acknowledging, um, all, all the hardships that everybody endured in their, in their own way. And as a, as a unit, as a world, mm -hmm. no, no one's forgetting about that. But I mean, at the time, you know, I had to live some life, even though there wasn't a lot of life to live because the world was shut down. But personally, I got to live a lot of life. And if I hadn't, I don't think I could have made the record I made. And I'm very proud of this record. So you know, it all shook down the way it needed to, to be. What was the the thing that, because you, you, when you said you first went back in the studio, you said, I don't know if I still believe. And that turned into, I still believe what was beyond that song. What was the step to like, get you back into the studio? Cause that's going to be a big hurdle to, for anyone to decide to weird. get back at it. It was weird. Cause everyone was still nervous about COVID. I, this was 20, either late 2020 or early 2021 when I stepped back into the studio and everyone was still nervous. And so we had to wear a mask when I wasn't singing and I was behind a partition. So I couldn't really see the producer one-on-one -on -one like normal. And we were just talking through the mic and the headsets. 
and um strange process obviously different um I'm used to being very close with the songwriters and um the process was strange <laughs> it was strange but it was so casual because we all knew there wasn't a rush you know like sadly our record before this record unbreakable came out right before covid so that record didn't really get its day in the sun that it that it deserved but like i said it all happens for a reason um so with this one everyone was like just you know we don't want to rush it take your time and so thankfully i got to do something i'd never done before which was not rush to make a record in the three weeks you have in between tours you know which before it was like you wrote 13 songs those the first 13 songs you wrote they're on the album hope you like them mm -hmm. and you know to be honest there were some songs i didn't really like in hindsight that i was like i wish i could have gone back and maybe plugged those in with other other things i could have tried so i really got to try a lot of things on this album and i'm so happy with it and, and i was very very like detail oriented on this record more than ever like i scrutinized every drum tone drum fill guitar riff structural change you know transition everything nothing got past me on this record where before i was a little bit like oh, i don't want to be difficult so i'll just you know pick and choose my battles and this one i'm sure they all wanted to kill me at the end of it <laughs> i think that's uh, the 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 what we all want to be when we're creative we want to be in control of uh, what's going on and you said that uh, you got to try things that you hadn't been able to try before what are some of those things being picky you know bef before um it was my so the record before it was my first time working with outside songwriters and who are legendary uh, the songwriters i'm i'm very blessed to be working with have at any given point a song in the top 10 between the three of the ones I work with and they do, you know, shine down Daughtry, um, hailstorm in this moment. Uh, I mean, pick a band in the top 20 right now. And they, they've probably done a song with them at some point. And, um, when I started working with them, the last record, I, I felt very like, um, they, these are the professionals and you listen to them. And I kind of diminished my skills that I had created and honed over the years songwriting myself. I didn't really wasn't as confident um, back then. But but on this record, I felt very comfortable with them at this point. I felt very confident in my abilities and what I bring to the table. And they've made me feel very confident too. You know, they're they're always complimenting me and are impressed with what I bring to the song. And um, so I felt like I could speak up and 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 tell them like no I don't like this and though there'll be a little pushback sometimes like well you know this is how we feel it should be and I go no I hear you but but in my heart it's like I hear something else and um we really turned out a great record that I can walk away saying every second I love like every second so you say there's a full record of when um well a do we have a, a name for the record that we can know and two yeah. when is it coming out so it's coming out uh, the first week of march so soon okay and it's called half black heart beautiful that makes yes. sense <laughs> <laughs> thank you i mean it's something i had in my back pocket for a long time it was like waiting for the right record and it just felt like this was the right record to go for it you know we were talking earlier about how you've been going like you started touring like 2004 which is mind-boggling to me because yeah. that's 20 years ago like yeah. when you look at where new year's day was back in 2004 like obviously you thought like when we were rocking those songs that was the best songs that we're ever going to write type of thing yeah. and now looking back what is it like to see a 20-year legacy of the band and um i guess like what's the the retrospective of it it's inspiring to me. Uh, like, how does someone stay so laser focused on the goal and the dream? And I don't know why I was born that way, but I've, I like, I was born on this earth. I knew I wanted to play music. I knew I wanted to perform. I knew I wanted to sing. I always have. And I just, it's just a, some sort of miracle <laughs> that somehow um, I've been lucky to do it for this long. I'm, I mean, looking back, 
the music industry has changed and fluctuated so much and 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 new year's day has rode every wave you know are we the biggest band in the world right now not yet um we're a slow burn and but you know like for example we started doing warp tour in 2007 on a fold out truck and by the end of warp tour you know we were headlining and it took 10 years to get there. It took us 10 years. 2007 was our first and 2017 we headlined. And I look forward to the next five or 10 years and see how much more, um, you know, we get to accomplish and what kind of a beacon that can be for other people who have dreams in the music industry or with anything, anything at all, you know? Inspiring. I love it. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to do something great. In, in, you should. In, I'm, I'm going to try. Damn it. You I'm going to try. Who knows what that will be? Um, what is twenty twenty four looking like for um for for New Year's Day and for uh, Ash Costello? Well, our favorite thing in the world is touring, and you know, obviously, that's every that's that's the end all be all for any musician. You know, we all love writing music, we love making records, and all of that. But the goal is that thirty minutes to two hours on stage. So that's what we're looking forward to. And um, you know, one of our goals, something we've always wanted, is to. And it, again, it's been a slow build over the years is we love radio. We love um, every every radio station we get to meet and hang out with around the country. We're always like, pinch us. This is so cool. You know, go back and tell, you know, 15 year old Ashley, she's on the radio. It's crazy. Um, but in, in fact, we actually get to go to Vegas at the end of this month for a radio convention where oh, DJs yeah. come. Uh, we've done it before. It's yeah. really fun. I'll, I'll be there. I'm looking yeah, forward to it. Yeah, we're going to hang out. Yes. You want to? For sure. Yeah. Mark. It okay. Down. Okay. Okay. Cause um, I think last time we God, where was it? The D or golden nugget. I can't remember, but we ended up at this like uh party at the golden Tiki. So fun. Oh yes. That uh, I don't know <laughs> if I was there, but I've heard of many a story of, uh, it was of so, there. we just had such a good time with everybody. Well, we're, we're people, people. Um, so it's going to be me and my guitar player, Nikki, who's been in the band for gosh, like 15 years. And, um, everyone wants to take shots with us because we love to party <laughs> with you. <laughs> That's why we go. We're so excited. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing you there and uh, seeing New Year's Day out on the road and uh, Half Black Heart coming out first week of March. It's going to be a big, uh, big 2024. Thank you. I hope so.